Bushcraft 412 and we're doing a video today on a couple more additions to my vintage knife collection. Now I kind of had this weird little obsession lately about uh, New York knives. You know for some reason I just kind of the more and more I kind of research I see that New York was just this juggernaut of knife making uh, going back to the early 1900s and I just kind of you know like I actually lived uh, very close to the Camillus uh, cutlery factory. I lived like six miles from it at one point in my life and you know there's just there's all this history in New York with making knives and, and you know if you look at most of the knives from World War II were made in New York and just so much of the military knives are made in New York and it's just really cool all that history and all that local history for me and I wanted to show three of my new finds and uh Kind of give you maybe a little bit of a history on all three of them. The first one is probably the one that's the most recognizable. This is the Pilot's Knife, the 5 inch Pilot's Knife. This one is a Camillus brand. Stamp Camillus New York. A little uh, worse for the wear. I've actually tried dating this knife, and from the research I've been able to tell, is that, uh, you know, of course the. Uh, Pilot's knife's been around since the 50s, uh, but they went from the 6 inch to the 5 inch in 1962. And then uh, the other little fact I found out is that they stopped marking the blade in 1967 and started marking on the pommel. So I know, because this is a 5 inch Pilot's knife, it was made sometime between 1962 and 1967. So very neat, and if I'm wrong on that research guys, uh, Somebody go ahead and correct me, please. But that's the, the best I can come up with at this point. Very cool knife with a very cool history. Originally designed by Marbles out of Michigan. And uh, Camillus uh, was able to underbid them. Cool knife. And I guess the, the sawback, I guess uh, the interesting thing about the sawback on this is it wasn't meant to go through wood. It was actually meant to go through the fuselage of an airplane. So kind of neat little bit there. As you can see, this knife's a little worse for the wear, but I'm going to try and do a uh, a light restoration job on it and just make sure I can preserve this for future generations. And I guess there was some glow-in-the-dark paint on the uh, pommel, too, which, of course, it's long since kind of worn off, but neat little fact as well. If anyone has any more uh, information or history on these, I'd definitely love to hear it. So that's the first one. Made in Camillus, New York, uh, which is near uh, Syracuse area. It's uh, kind of dead in the middle of the state, for those of you who aren't familiar. Uh, Camillus was around for about 100 years. They closed their doors in 2007. They were a huge company that made, you know, everything from pocket knives to, you know, they made the, uh, not, the, well, they made the, the USMC uh, fighting knife in World War II and, and many other knives, but they closed due to foreign competition. Second knife, very cool little knife. This is PAL cutlery, and the markings on this are very light, so you probably won't be able to see it. But, you know, the blade's not in the greatest shape. But it does say uh, USN Mark I, so it is a US Navy Mark I knife. Mark with PAL cutlery RH35. Uh, Pell Cutlery, I believe, was originally out of Germany. Uh, and they've moved to, like, Chicago, and they moved around a bunch. But eventually they settled down in Plattsburgh, New York, which is up uh, near Canada, in the North Country up there. And they produced these knives for the military for quite a while. I guess Pell completely stopped uh, their uh, production and just started making, you know, military knives. And this one is the... Uh, U.S. Navy Mark I knife, which I picked up for, I think, $14. Oh, by the way, I got the uh, Camillus knife for, like, $19.99. Got this one for $14, which, really cool deal. They're not very popular, but Pal Cutlery, you know, not many people have heard of them except people who collect, you know, vintage knives. But they were out of Plattsburgh, New York. So, very cool knife. Probably... World War II era, who knows if it was issued or not. There's not a lot of information on PAL cutlery. Very interesting aluminum pommel on it. Very cool little knife. Once again, if anyone's got info, more info on this bad boy, I'd love to hear it. 
And this middle one is a very cool knife. This is something I never even heard of until I started getting into vintage knives. This is the Cataragus 225Q. This is essentially a uh, knife that was made for commandos. Huh? The, you probably won't be able to read the stamp on there. But Cataragus County is in kind of the southern tier of New York. They were... Uh, I believe they went under a couple different names as well. They existed until about the 1950s when they closed shop. The interesting thing about that company is that the Case Brothers, who went on to form Case uh, Cutlery in Pennsylvania, came from the Cataragus factory. Um, this knife, I believe, was originally designed for commando use. It's very similar in size and shape to the K-Bar. This is, of course, like a World War II issue knife. I don't believe they made a civilian version. So this would be World War II issue. Uh, people often refer to it as a quartermaster knife. And that quartermasters had it and they would use it to open crates and whatnot. And I've heard stories both ways. Some people say it's a quartermaster knife and that that's what it's for. And other people say that no, it was not a quartermaster knife. This was a knife for commandos. And that the only way they could get it was to order it directly through the quartermaster. And that's where it got, why it got the nickname the Quartermaster Knife. Uh, Case made one very similar to this as well. Uh, it was like the 337Q or something along those lines. But once again, a very cool knife by a New York company. And most people don't even remember that Cataragus Cutlery exists. And I'm glad I was able to find this one. And this one I think I paid the most for. It might have been, uh, I think maybe 24 or 25 bucks. Very rare knife. Not... A ton of them around and I had to snag one up because who knows when these things are going to be gone or when the prices are going to go up but look at the, you know the three of these are very cool New York knives you know my my home state and you know of course these two are most likely World War II issue this one here in 1960 so this may have been uh, probably issued before Vietnam uh, but of course they continue to make this knife to this day um, Ontario makes the uh, Air Force survival knife. Uh, Camilla stopped making the, you know, Camilla's went on the business, but now Ontario makes a civilian version, plus I still believe they manufacture a, uh, a military contract one as well. Uh, so I'm going to continue with the uh, vintage knives. I think there's definitely a lot of knives out there I want to, you know, get home and do a light restoration job and uh, keep them for, you know, pass them on to the kids and stuff like that. And also just kind of a call to my subscribers, if you have tips on how to restore these knives, I'm all ears. Feel free to private message me or make a response video. Um, what I'm looking for with these is not to, I don't want to sand down the blades and repolish them or anything like that. I want to keep the patina on them, keep their original, keep everything original on them. I just want to get them as clean as I can get them without altering the blades, you know, without ruining, ruining the historical value of them. So I want to keep the handles original and just preserve them, keep the guards and the pommels all original, but just find a way to clean up the blades as best I can without sanding and repolishing. So guys, if we have any experts out there, speak up. I'd definitely love to hear. So Bushcraft 412, I'm a three vintage knife addition to the collection.